Pokemon Home was supposed to launch on May 24th. However, because of the recent pushback from the Pokemon company, we now don't actually know when this is going to happen anymore. In an effort to try and be prepared for whenever Pokemon Home does drop, whether it's tomorrow or in five weeks from now, I decided to make a move set for every single Pokemon that will most likely be allowable in the next regulation of VGC, assuming that the Pokemon from Pokemon Home do get added to this. This means that we're going to go over movesets for all Pokemon, whether they're viable or not, unless if they are a box art or a mythical Pokemon. And if you enjoy this content and want to see more, like and subscribe and answer the common question of the day, what is the Pokemon you are looking most forward to coming back? With that said, shout out to Kurt for editing this as always, and let's get into the video. Starting off with Charizard, we have a rather simple moveset here. With the Charcoal, with the Heat Wave, Solar Beam, Air Slash, and Protect, this honestly should be a really strong sweeper on Tailwind teams for Sun. Pokemon like Murkrow will be amazing partners with this, and it should be a rather simple yet very easy way to just start destroying opponents here. Moving on to Alolan Raichu, we have another pretty simple one. With a Life Orb with Psychic, Discharge, Terra Blast, Ice, and Protect, this should be a really strong way for a person to try and run this with future Paradox Pokemon that would benefit from speed boosting, and use Raichu as a pretty strong offensive option. I do still think that regular Raichu is a little bit better here, and you can throw Fake Out over one of these moves, but overall this should still be a pretty decent option nonetheless. Now we have a rather detrimental Pokemon to your team. Uh, we have Dugtrio alone form with Rock Slide, Iron Head, Earthquake, and Memento. Some other options to consider here might be moves such as Helping Hand, Protect, or really just any sort of status option. I even considered Fisher and Sucker Punch's moves. However, I think that Alolan Dugtrio is just something that if you really want to run it, you should accept that no matter what moves you're using, it's going to be bad. Speaking of not so great Pokemon, Alolan Persian. Alolan Persian was really good in previous formats, specifically Generation 7 formats. However, it's definitely fallen from grace to say the least, and I don't think this format changes much for it. With the Terra Ghost, I think that Alolan Persian will benefit the most from this, as it will help a bit with the fighting weakness, as well as making it neutral to fairy again. Uh, and I didn't really think that Poison would be a great defensive typing for a Pokemon that's built around staying alive. Uh, we have Foul Play, Fake Out, Parting Shot, and Taunt on our moveset. I will say that the investment's actually pretty incredible. I found out that Alolan Persian can actually take an adamant max attack close combat from Iron Hands, so this might be beneficial if Iron Hands ends up opting to run more attack or just opts to run close combat on its movesets, as you can guarantee take this and then parting shot out. Otherwise though, foul play is still a really great way of doing damage and parting shot's a great way to cycle out into other Pokemon, maybe to bring in other intimidate threats and just start wearing down a lot of physical options. I will say though, Persian definitely got a bit worse because with parting shot, you can't actually use this move on clear amulet options. So especially in close sheet, I would not recommend this. However, if you want to replace this move, something like an Icy Wind could still be a decent option here. Moving on to Hisuian Arcanine, there's actually a lot of movesets I think could work really well for this Pokemon, but one that I personally favored was the Choice Banded Rockhead moveset. I think any of the defensive movesets work slightly better with regular Arcanine, unless you really care about the Rock Slide being a stab option here. Uh, but with Extreme Speed, Flare Blitz, Head Smash, and Rock Slide, Hisuian Arcanine will be an amazing breaker on Tailwind. I did have Wild Charge on this moveset, however, a friend of mine by the name of Faye had pointed out that Wild Charge actually does significantly less damage than Head Smash, even before Terra if you were to opt for a Terra Rock over Terra Normal. And despite the fact that Head Smash is only base 80 accuracy, I still think this will be a much better option to just lock into versus Wild Charge that isn't going to be doing a lot of damage to most Pokemon, especially when Rock is such a good offensive stab here. Moving on to Galar Slowbro, this is a little bit of a gimmicky set, but I do like the idea of this nonetheless. We have the Quick Claw Quick Draw set with Shell Sidearm, Psychic, Grass Knot, and Protect, and with the Terra Water for the Terra Typing. I opted for Terra Water just to try and help a little bit with the Trick Room matchup, uh, it's one of the best and slowest Pokemon on Trick Room will always be Torkoal, so I opted for Terra Water as a more defensive means around this. With Shell Sidearm, Psychic, and Grass Knot being good offensive stabs, Shell Sidearm of course having the ability to tailor itself based on really if it would be stronger physically or specially. Uh, specifically, this should work based off of I believe Slowbro stats, uh, but either way though, Though, this should be a really good way of just dealing damage to the opponent as well as possible and making sure that the slow bro will always be a good offensive piece here. With Psychic, it's just a great primary stab. Psychic offensively does a lot of damage, and then Grass Knot I opted for over something like a Chilling Water because this helps out with a lot of bulky waters that might otherwise try and sponge this Pokemon, and there weren't really a lot of Pokemon that I specifically needed to be throwing on coverage for with Chilling Water that weren't going to be taking more damage from Grass Knot anyway. However, both options are still fair to consider here. We have Quick Draw and Quick Claw here, mostly just to try and hit as fast as possible, 
as often as possible. And that's the same reason we have the zero speed IV, so then if you were to throw this on Trick Room, it could still be a very slow Pokemon. Moving on to Alolan Muck here, Alolan Muck is actually a pretty incredible option here. Despite losing a lot of good moves like Curse, Shadow Sneak, and Pursuit, it does still keep Knock Off, Brick Break, Gunk Shot, and Ice Punch, which are all incredible. Uh, with the Terra Grass, you're able to actually take any sort of great Tusk hit pretty comfortably post Terra. Meanwhile, with the special defense and HP investment, it's actually a really strong Fluttermain check, being guaranteed 3 killed by any move besides Mystical Fire post Terra. And even still, if someone's really locking Mystical Fire on Fluttermain, it means that one, it started running the move, and two, that they're not going to be doing a lot of damage versus most partners you would be pairing with this, so you should still be in good hands. Moving on to Hisuian Electrode here, we have the Covert Cloak, which is mostly here to try and avoid stuff like Icy Wind, Iron Bundle, and Electro Web Regieleki, and it should help keep Electrode actually a fairly fast threat here. With Discharge, Chloroblast, Thunderbolt, and Protect, this is just designed to try and be a really strong damage dealer, and with the 196 speed, this is designed to creep Dragapult, which is the next slowest Pokemon in the format, since you didn't really need to be running max speed. If you're running Electrode, it's not tie their Electrodes, I promise you. Moving on to the Cantonian Tauros, we've had three fairly good Paldean Tauros forms, with the weakest one of those being the combat form, and even then, just, it's only just outclassed, it's not really a terrible Pokemon to begin with. With regular Cantonian Tauros though, I don't really see that being the case. However, if you want to try and run Cantonia Tauros, I do recommend the Sheer Force set with Body Slam, Rock Slide, Close Combat, and Protect, and just use a Life Orb just to deal as much damage as possible with your moves and ability. I think this is kind of okay on Tailwind, but otherwise, wouldn't count on it. Speaking of not great Pokemon, we're going to move on to a couple of them, uh, with the first one being regular Articuno. Now, I will say that regular Articuno could have been really good if it kept Auroraville. However, with the lack of Auroraville, your best option will be Icy Wind, Helping Hand, Tailwind, and Haze. I do like the idea of running Haze. It's still a decent way to get around a lot of setup threats, whether offensively or defensively, uh, with Icy Wind being great for speed control, especially with Tailwind against other Tailwind teams, as Tailwind will be huge in this upcoming format. And then Helping Hand is just a good support here, though you could always opt to run something like a Freeze Dry or even a Terra Blast here. I do have Terra Blast Ground, mostly just to try and help get around your four times weakness to Rock, and it has a a little bit different weaknesses that you would not be sharing if you were to run something like a steel, which would actually be sharing that fire weakness here. So I figured the ground was the best. However, you're typically going to want to keep this in the pre terra form because on a snow team with the snow cloak ability and the ice typing, you should be a fairly strong physical wall. Speaking of Articuno, we do have Galarian Articuno with the terra fighting typing. Now, I do believe this one will actually be kind of good with Terra Blast, Freezing Glare, Hurricane, and Tailwind, and the 204 Speed Timid, which should allow you to creep all the way through Booster Energy Iron Bundle with your Tailwind up. Uh, with Freezing Glare, Hurricane, and Terra Blast, this should honestly be a really strong offensive threat, and I do believe that with a competitive, as well as the rise in Landorus Therian usage, which will be coming with this format, as well as present Pokemon like Arcanine and even kind of Salamence and Gyarados, that Articuno Galarian form might actually be a strong anti-meta threat. Onto our next legendary bird. We have Cantonian Zapdos with the Citrus Berry and the Static ability. I think that Zapdos will prove to be a really strong option, and truthfully, a video like this will never do how good this Pokemon will be justice. But one moveset that I think will work on a majority of teams will be this moveset right here with Hurricane, Discharge, Tailwind, and Protect. Most teams will just benefit from having a Tailwind option like Zapdos, and you don't really need any other offensive Terra option, in my opinion, unless if you're really worried about Gastrodon, which in my opinion would only happen on a Rain team. Uh, with this investment, it's actually pretty incredible. With the 164 speed Timid Nature, you're hitting the same benchmark that we hit on our Galarian Articuno, which should be able to again creep booster bundle at plus two with Tailwind. Meanwhile, you'll also be able to take an Adamant Palafin Rain boosted hit, even if it's with Terra Water and going for Wave Crash with the Mystic Water item, which is basically as offensive as Palafin gets in this format. With the Terra Grass, this also helps a lot with getting rid of your weaknesses to moves like Rock Slide, which are fairly common ways around Zapdos. And with the Citrus Berry, you're able to get a lot of really good longevity around this Pokemon. Finally, with the 20 in Special Attack, this is mostly just leaning in our remaining investment into the offensiveness, because I do think that Zapdos will be a really strong offensive powerhouse here, and we have the last four into our Special Defense here. Moving on to Galarian Zapdos, we do have a really interesting moveset. I opted for Thunderous Kick, Brave Bird, Brick Break, and Protect here, and this is actually for a fairly good reason. There's a fairly strong Pokemon in the format already being King Gambit with the Defiant ability, and it typically likes to run the, uh, the Terra typing of Flying. And if a King Gambit were to go for Terra Flying on Thunderous Kick, it would suddenly be boosted to plus two in offense, and it would be able to snowball my team while having taken practically no damage. But it's also not a Pokemon I could safely go for something such as a Ground Attack with Sumping Tantrum, or a Brave Bird either, because those options could still be played around with Terra or no Terra. 
so I opted to throw Brick Break on instead, as I feel like this is a much safer alternative to Thunderous Kick in this situation. Because despite most matchups, you will benefit from dropping physical defense by one stage, whether for Zapdos' sake or your partner Pokemon. At the same time though, Brick Break will still be a good option to get around this 50-50, and it's great for the rise in stuff like Bundle Hail, or even just opposing screens that will probably be coming into play in this format. So I figured this was an option that might actually be really strong here. Hopefully you guys can get where I'm coming from with this, and worst case scenario, just throw on like a random Terra Blast with a counter typing, or even something like a Drill Peck for a non-recoil stab, or maybe even Trailblaze to boost your speed. All of these are viable options here. I just personally like the Brick Break backup here. Moving on to Moltres. This is probably going to be the worst of the Cantonian birds, and I've I said this a lot actually in tier list videos for anyone who's been watching those, uh, but we have the Covert Cloak with the Tailwind, will o Pelping Hand, and Heat Wave. I'm going to be honest, this is just support Charizard. Use Charizard. Don't use this mod unless you're really passionate about using regular Moltres. Uh, really, any other sets just are shit Charizards. They're slower than Charizard, they don't hit as hard as Charizard, you get Flame Body, which is kind of cool, but really, yeah, just, just use Charizard. Moving on to Galarian Moltres here, we have Nasty Plot, Fire Wrath, Hurricane, and Protect. I opted for a max speed set here, mostly just because of the fact that unlike with the other birds, we're not really going to be necessarily pairing this in Tailwind, just due to the flying typing, and the fact that flying spam, while viable, isn't exactly something that every team wants. And Galarian Moltres doesn't necessarily need it either. With the Nasty Plot, you can boost your special attack, which is really valuable on this Pokemon. However, moves like Agility and Tailwind are also suitable here. With the Citrus Berry, this should help with getting back some HP after you pop your Berserk, allowing you to potentially even pop it a second time, which is pretty valuable. And with the Fire Wrath and Hurricane offensive options, you don't really need another stab, so we just opted for Terra Flying here, though Terra Dark is also suitable if you want to try and keep your immunity to moves like Thunder Wave, while ditching a potential weakness to Rock Slide. Overall, this will still be a fairly good offensive option, but if you're expecting it to be as good as it was in Sword and Shield, I wouldn't count your luck. Moving on to Jotonian Typhlosion, we do have the Choice Scarf with Eruption, Heat Wave, Focus Blast, and Flamethrower. This is honestly just the Jotonian form of the set that you're going to see next momentarily, but I thought it was kind of worth mentioning. Uh, both Typhlosions can run Choice Scarf, however, if you're going to run this with Hisuian Typhlosion, I would recommend changing out one of the Fire Stabs, most likely Flamethrower, for Infernal Parade, as I think that's probably the best option here. You could go with a different tire type, however, for Jotonian Typhlosion specifically, I think it fires your best bet. For the Hisuian Typhlosion moveset, however, I did opt to feature a slightly different moveset, as I do think this is a Pokemon that does have a lot of good ones, and I think that the Charcoal moveset might even be slightly better. We have Heat Wave, Eruption, Infernal Parade, and Protect, and essentially your job here is just to function as a fast mode for Torkoal, and unlike with regular Charizard, you can't actually run Eruption on that anymore, meaning that Hisuian Typhlosion might actually have some merit over Charizard, being the fact that you can just run a fast mode Eruption spammer. But I would still say that Charizard is probably going to be better for this role. Moving on to Galar Soaking with the Mental Herb with Trick Room, Chili Reception, Sludge Bomb, and Eerie Spell. I like Eerie Spell here actually as a means of trying to be a good stall breaker, and with how much stall we've actually seen prevalent in this format through stuff like Terra Poison, Wochian, and Dose you might actually have some merit running this move. Meanwhile, with Chili Reception, it should be a strong pivot to try and bring in other Pokemon and take advantage of your Galar Slowking's Regenerator here. I think this Pokemon might be slightly better than last generation, but to say that a Pokemon that was hitting like around 0.01% usage to 0.03% usage would be exactly much worse this generation, I wouldn't exactly say it's a huge step to achieve here. Going to Hisuian Quillfish, we have an Aviolate option for Quillfish, and I think this is just going to be Quillfish on crack. With Terra Grass, you'll have Haze, Toxic Spikes, Icy Wind, and Taunt. And with the investment in your speed, you should be able to creep any sort of base 80s here. Meanwhile, with your Fizz Def and HP investment, you're actually guaranteed 3 KO would by Protosynthesis Attack Close Combat after Intimidate, pre or post Terra. Meanwhile, with the Terra Grass, you can make sure that you're taking Headlong Rushes sufficiently well as well. Overall, this should be a really good physical check, and I'm actually very interested to see if Quillfish takes off, because I think this might have some merit after running some Calcs, and I'm curious to see what you guys think as well. Moving on to Sneasel, this is one of those baby Pokemon that doesn't really have a lot of purpose being mentioned here. It's honestly just a really shitty Sneasler. However, at the same time, with the fact that I am mentioning Sneasel in a lot of tier lists, and I have put Sneasel Hisuian on tier lists, I thought it was worth mentioning in case anyone for some reason really wants to run this. But honestly, don't run Hisuian Sneasel. It's not good. I'm not going to give it the time of day, but I guess I crept Jigglypuff Screamtail thing. That's, yeah, I crept Screamtail. That's what I meant to say. And I have Night Slash to get on your four times Psychic Weakness. That's all the logic you're getting from this one. Moving on to Yupsi, we start to get into the Like Trio, and I'm going to be honest, they're not that great this format. For this one, I decided to go with the Terra Steel set, which takes advantage of the ability Levitate to try and get yourself a really strong immunity to ground types, 
thanks to the ability. Meanwhile, with Mental Herb, you should be able to pop a lot of your statuses since you do have Yawn, Helping Hand, and Trick Room all up for really strong support here. Meanwhile, Foul Play is really just to try and take advantage of physical attackers because a lot of physical attackers are at the top of the format and there's very few special attackers that are prominent. However, I will say with Home, this should end up balancing out a lot better. Moving on to Mesprit. I do think a Mesprit is just a really shitty version of Uxie. However, this does have a slightly better speed stat for Trick Room being base 80 versus Uxie's 95, as well as the fact that you do have Mystical Power, which while Uxie can run this as well, I think it's better suited for Mesprit's better split offenses. I have healing reach over Yawn here as well, just because of the fact that really just because Mesprit doesn't get it. If Mesprit got Yawn, I would probably be throwing that on because I think that despite healing wish being valuable, it's a little bit less consistent than Yawn would be, which could just honestly change our games pretty early on without having something die. Moving on to Azelf, this one's actually going to be a lot more offensive of an option, and I could actually see Azelf maybe being some really niche option on Psychic but I don't really think it's going to be that great until Expanding Force comes into play. However, with Mystical Power, Terra Blast, Dazzling Gleam, and Protect, with the Terra Fighting to get around matchups like in Gambit, you might actually be able to make this Pokemon work. I just don't see it being a really justifiable option is all. Moving on to Heatran, this might be one of, if not the worst generations that Heatran has ever had. However, with the Terra Grass, I think this is actually something. We have Heat Wave, Terra Blast, Grass, Earth Power, and Protect, and I'm running Max Speed Heatran mostly to check other Heatran. It's one of those things that despite Heatran probably not being amazing as format, it'll be noteworthy enough just due to its stat line and the fact that it has such a good moveset and ability to become a good Terra option. But at the same time though, this definitely will be a hard generation to run Heatran just with the massive power creeps, the lost in eruption, and the fact that it is really slow for this format, even as far as Tailwind goes, and it's still too fast to be a good Trick Room option. So I think a Heatran might actually just get overlooked this generation, which is kind of unfortunate because I still think it's kind of a good mod. Moving on to Cresselia, I've heard from some friends that this is actually a really cracked Pokemon right now, and I can believe it after looking into this thing. With the Alley Switch, Trick Room, Icy Wind, and Lunar Blessing, I opted for a moveset that can at least try and fish for a near max roll to, well, actually, you need a, a max roll twice in a row for this Pokemon to actually be tumor KO by some boosted Fluttermane, which is pretty valuable in my opinion. Not only this, but at the very least as well, with the Lunar Blessing, you should be able to heal up yourself by 25%, which is pretty important because Cresselia typically doesn't take a lot of damage, but you also heal up your partner Pokemon by 25%, and both of you guys get your status cleared. Now, there are certain Pokemon I would actually never run this move with, and I would instead opt for Moonlight, such as if you're pairing this thing next to an Ursa Luna with Guts, but other than that, honestly, this is a pretty good option, and Lunar Blessing could be a really strong way to keep Trick Room Pokemon alive. Overall, really insane stuff, and I do fully expect this thing to be a monster. My friend had suggested this with Iron Hands, and I'm looking forward to trying that very quickly in this format, as I think that will be incredible. Moving on to Samurai, our first generation 5 Pokemon. We do have the Scope Lens with Sacred Sword, Night Slash, Aqua Cutter, and Protect, but I'll be honest, this is just a shitty Hisuian Samurai. With the Shell Armor ability, it's just because it doesn't have Sharpen on Unovan Sanorot, and we have the Terra Dark again just to try and copy the success that Hisuian Sanorot might actually provide to this format. However, one nice thing I guess is the fact that this Pokemon is fast enough to still creep threats like Tyranitar, but it still is too fast to actually be good on Trick Room. So uh, we'll just move on to the Hisuian counterpart being Hisuian Sanorot. With the Scope Lens, this thing runs Aqua Cutter, Sacred Sword Protect, and Ceaseless Edge over Night Slash. Now, this ends up actually being a really valuable Pokemon because with base 85 speed, this is just fast enough to start justifying it on Tailwind. And with the base 65 Ceaseless Edge, this is not only sharpness boosted, but it also is able to set a layer of spikes when it hits on the opposing side of the field. Now, this might not seem like it's too important, but being able to just spam a hazard while going for a damage boosting move will be actually really incredible because sharpness will make this a really strong offensive threat. At the same time, though, you're also able to break through sturdy and focus sash options that might be appearing in the back seats of a format, forcing your opponents to maybe either lead or give up their sash here. Meanwhile, with the scope lens were able to boost the aqua cutter crit rate, as this is a high critical hit ratio move that is also then boosted by sharpness, being an incredible damage dealer here. I have to for Terra Dark just to try and get around random prankster stuff like Prankster T-Wave, but truthfully, any offensive Terra works here for any of these three stabs, or even just opting for something like a random Terra with Terra Blast stab over Protect if you wanted to maybe go with an Assault Vest route here. Moving on, we do have Hisuian Lilligan, which honestly, I was really unsure how to run this thing, but I think I found an okay set. We have Terra Ghost, which is essentially just making this thing into the new Lilligan with just a faster speed stat and a physical offense. I opted for After You, Ice Spinner, Leaf Blade, and Protect here, with Ice Spinner really just being a great way to partner with Chien Pao. Now you might be wondering, why do I care about partnering this thing with mods like Chien Pao and also Dragonite, when both of those actually commonly run Ice Spinner, especially Chien Pao. However, it's mostly so then Lilligant can do the job of clearing priority while there's Pokemon in the back, so then you can instead get rid of the Psychic Terrain before they even need to touch the field, allowing them to just instantly click their priority options. 
I do think this will be pretty good, and it's going to be a really good way to partner with Torkoal because it ups the skill ceiling for speed even further, as really the only other Pokemon that would be kind of viable that would outpace you is either opposing Lycanroc if they clear your sun, or really just opposing weather Pokemon if they clear your weather in that regard, or Jumpluff, which could maybe go for a Sleep Powder, and that's about all I can do against you. So overall, I think Hisuian Lilligant will actually be incredible, and it's just going to be a leg up upon regular Lilligant. Moving on to Hisuian Zark, I think this one could actually be kind of interesting. We have a Choice Scarf set with Bitter Malice, Hyper Voice, Focus Blast, and Trick, with the entire fighting mostly just trying to help boost that Focus Blast stab. This could easily be subsidized by a Terra Blast, however, I figured in case you don't want to tire this thing due to the fact that its typing does grant a lot of good immunities to stuff like Extreme Speed and also Shadow Sneak, that you might end up just wanting to run Focus Blast and take your chance with accuracy here, but to each their own. Next up, we have one of my favorite mons coming into this format, and it's mostly just because of the fact that I think this moveset in particular is pretty interesting. However, it's not my very favorite, it is up there though. We have Braviary Hisuian form, with the scope lens with Esper Wing, Hurricane, Terra Blast, and Protect. We have Terra fighting on this thing to try and help with matchups like King Gambit, and with the 196 speed, this should actually allow us after the Esper Wing boosts our speed by one stage to outpace even Lycanroc if we have Tailwind up next to this thing with the Sand present. So, for example, if Lycanroc is now dealing with a plus one speed Hisuian Braviary that has hit around 181, we can then proceed to go for a Tailwind, and we now hit 362 for our speed benchmark, which means we do creep the max speed Jolly 252 Lycanroc in the sand, which is great because it means that it can't go for a super effective Cell Rock here. Overall, this Pokemon will be interesting. I'm curious to see if the, there will be a really good Tailwind setter next to this Pokemon, because again, leading off of those sort of leads where you're both Rock weak isn't great when Rock Side is one of the best moves in the format, but I do think that Braviary and Hisuian form could actually maybe make this work due to Esper Wing also having a high crit ratio to take advantage of that scope lens, and the Tinny Lens ability as well getting around Pokemon that have resistances to this Pokemon is also really incredible for your damage. Overall, this should be interesting. Moving on to our genies finally, we have Tornadus Incarnate with the Covert Cloak with Bleak Wind Storm, Tailwind, Icy Wind, and Taunt. This is just max speed to tie up the Tornadus forms. I don't feel confident giving this thing a really bulky spread this early in the format just due to the fact that there are too many anomalies and unlike something like a Thunderous, you're not dropping offenses consistently. However, with Bleak Wind Storm, you're able to have a 30% chance of dropping the opponent's speed stat by one stage, which in partnership with Icy Wind and Tailwind means that you're going to be a really incredible speed control option. Taunt's just here to get around opposing other Tailwind options, and with the Terra Dark, you can get your immunity to Prankster Taunt, which means that you should have the advantage of getting up Tailwind here. Overall, pretty incredible Pokemon. Meanwhile, with Tornadus' Theory and Form, I do think this one's a lot more lackluster. We have Terra Flying to boost the Bleak Wind Storm damage, and we have U-Turn Chilling Water and Icy Wind for other offensive options here. And I guess I opted for Assault Vest because of the fact that I wanted to just make Torn have any reason for being here, and I guess it's just to try and take special hits. But ultimately though, I do think that Tornadus' Theory and will honestly just be kind of underwhelming. You can maybe also try something like a Sharp Beak or a Focus Sash here to try and either take a hit guaranteed, or maybe even just boost your Bleak Wind Storm damage, but I really don't see Tornadus' Theory and being that good in this format, so we'll move on. Moving on to Thunderous Incarnate, we have the Terra Dark moveset with Covert Cloak, similar to Tornadus Incarnates, just to try and get its immunity to Prankster Taunts. We have Wild Bolt Storm, Eerie Impulse, Scary Face, and Taunt on this moveset, just to try and make this thing a really good support Pokemon. With Scary Face, we're dropping opponents by two speed, which is really important, especially for matchups like Great Tusk, which are some of the fastest Pokemon in the format due to being ran on Tailwind with a Choice Scarf. Meanwhile, with Eerie Impulse, we're dropping Special Attack or Special Attack by two stages, which is also really important, because with our 204 HP and 4 Spin F, we're able to actually guarantee take a single hit from even Pokemon like Sunboosted, Walking Wake, and Fluttermane, both of which gained the Protosynthesis boost while going for their stronger stab here. With the 244 speed, we also do Creep Walking Wake, which I thought was kind of important because we could at least try and get a little more Special Attack this way. With the 44 Investment and the 204 HP, we can also actually guarantee take an Ice Spinner from Sun Boost to Great Tusk, which on the flip side is probably the strongest physical equivalent that a Sun team would run. Overall, this Thunderous is a really good bulky set, and I do think that while we might see a lot of variance in what movesets these specifically go for, I think this is at least an option to consider nonetheless. Moving on to Thunderous Theory, and we have the Magnet set with Terra Blast, Flying, Wild Bolt Storm, Nasty Plot, and Protect. I think this will be a really strong option on Tailwind, and unlike something like a Tornadus, you could actually probably justify this a lot more due to the fact that you have the Volt Absorb ability, which at the very least, if anyone's trying to go for something like a Discharge to try and kill your partner flying type, your Thunderous will have an immunity to this. With the Terra Blast Flying, this should help with giving you an actual flying stab and it helps a lot with matchups like Great Tusk which might otherwise have an immunity to you. And with plus two you'll do enough damage to Garchomp where it will not matter that it does actually have an immunity to your Wild Bolt. 
Overall, this should be a really strong option. With the Magnet, you're able to do incredible damage to Pokemon like Kendozo, making this a really good threat, even if it is boosted with Commander and would otherwise have an immunity to your stat boost here. So overall, Thunder's Therian might actually have a place in this metagame. It'll still be kind of niche though, but it would probably never have had a better metagame in my opinion. Next up, we have our incarnate form of Landorus with Sansir, Storm, Terra Blast, Flying, Nasty Plot, and Protect. Where max speed just to try and creep any base 100s, and we have Terra Blast, Flying, and Sandsteer is just really good offensive moves here. With Nasty Plot, we'll be able to boost our damage even further if we're next to something like Wraith Powder or Moongus, which could help with the setup. And with Sandsteer Storm being a strong spread ground option that's boosted by Sheer Force, good luck trying to take a hit from this Pokemon. It was already hard enough taking a hit from Landorus Incarnate to begin with, and now that we have a spread boosted move that hits harder than Earth Power did, Good fucking luck. Moving on to Landorus Therian though, I actually struggled a lot with finding a moveset for this as well, but I think that I might have found something that will do. We have an Assault Vest set with Rock Slide, Earthquake, U-Turn, and Terra Blast Grass, and I opted to make this thing into a really strong option to not only check Fluttermane, but also Palafin. We creep 0 speed Palafin with our 76 investment, and not only this, but with our 60 attack, we should also be able to guarantee KO Fluttermane if it has no bulk with Earthquake, which is amazing because we are invested to take a single choice specs modest Terra Fairy Moonblast from Fluttermane, no matter what. With our 4 fist death and the impish nature, this is honestly just remaining investment to try and help take on physical attackers even easier, especially for Pokemon like Palafin, which we are going to have to Terra around to begin with. At least we should make sure that we're guaranteeing the matchup. Moving on to Chestnut here, this one's a pretty interesting option. I opted for Terra Rock with Citrus Berry using the Bulletproof ability with Belly Drum, Drain Punch, Rock Slide, and Trailblaze. I figured Trailblaze could be a good speed boosting option here, and similar to Braviary, we do have a creep for Sand Boosted Lycanroc, as it is probably the fastest thing that's viable in the format since the next fastest Pokemon will be Rain Boosted Floatzel, and no one really runs that. With Belly Drum, we should be able to partner this thing next to a really good redirection option like Mouse Hold especially would be incredible with this, and then taking advantage of not only Trailblaze, but also then options like Drain Punch for Stab, or even the newly Stab thanks to Terra, Rock Slide, which should also help with a lot of different flying types that would otherwise hit you for 4 times. We have 244 HP for the even number for Citrus Berry, so it always pops after Belly Drum, and then finally, the 60 investment in Special Defense is really just to try and boost our weaker defensive stat, as with the plus 6 physical attack, you don't really need to then be boosting your investment further here. It's a chestnut, it'll do enough damage. Speaking of other Kalos starters, we do have Delphox here, with the Mystical Fire, Sash Lock, Dazzling Gleam, and Protect. We creep Garchomp with our investment and have 252 special attack with our 4 investment in each of our defenses and HP just being to take advantage of that 12 remaining. There's no real reason to go with 12 HP when we could go with 4 HP and then proceed to boost both of our defenses by 1 point each, so I figured why not. Overall, this will be a really strong Terra Fairy Gleam option with Mystical Fire being great for steals and Psyshock being great for poisons. This should at least have an okay presence on Tailwind. Moving on to our final Kalos starter, we have arguably the weakest one this generation, being Greninja, with the Terra Ghost with Focus Sash to try and at least gain some semblance of a way to actually take a hit. With We have Helping Hand, Haze, Water Shuriken, and Dark Pulse. I made this thing just as fast as possible because you're not really going to take much hits, and with the speed tier, it's really contentious, so I figured why not just creep whatever we can here. Overall, if Greninja had map block, it might be viable, but currently, I think this is definitely the weakest of the three. Getting into our weakest Pokemon of the entire day, we have Carbink. I struggled to make this Mon even kind of viable here. We have Sturdy with Light Clay just to try and be a screen setter, but I honestly think this Mon is just garbage. Without something like a Misty Explosion, there's not really something I can lean into with Terra Fairy here, and without Explosion just outright or even Self Destruct to settle for, I can't even go for a normal gem boosted Terra Normal set. Overall, this thing just sucks, and I threw on Terra Ghost just to get, get Fake Out Immunity to try and preserve your Sturdy a little longer, but this Pokemon is just really bad, and I figured if it can do anything, at least Guard Split might be a way to get our partner Pokemon bulky enough to actually do something next to this thing. Moving on to Hisuian Gudra, we have a Terra Grass set with Assault Vest. We have Shell Armor with Muddy Water, Draco Meteor, Acid Spray, and Blank Bower. The moveset itself I actually just stole from Gudra on damage calcs to be completely honest, but it hits enough pretty varied that I figured it was fine. With the Gudra's investment, we had 252 HP and 108 Spidef, which is great for taking on Sunboosted Fluttermane even with the choice specs and in modest nature. Meanwhile, we have 76 special attack just to try and hit the next bump for our number, which means that we're getting 2 points from this 8 EVs going from 76 versus having hit 68 investment which brings us only to 152 instead of 154. We have 68 into our Fizz Def just to try and boost our physical defense a little further, and this will help a lot with our Terra Grass typing taking on a lot of physical threats such as Palafin and Great Tusk, and our 4 investment in speed is just remaining. Moving on to Avalug here, we have a rather interesting one. I threw on Ice Spinner, Rock Slide, Earthquake, and Stone Edge with the Assault Vest here with Terra Rock. With the Terra Rock and the Assault Vest with the 252 HP and 28 Spidef, we're able to actually guarantee take from Bull a Choice Specs Terra Fire boosted Eruption from Torkoal, which is probably one of the best Trick Room options you can name. Meanwhile, with our Terra Rock as well as its Stone Edge with the 180 attack Brave, we should be able to guarantee KO Torkoal even from full health. 
This means that if I can't really afford to not KO Torkoal on a given turn, that I can at least trade my Avalog most likely for it, if not maybe let it live to another turn. But this I figured was pretty worthwhile here. Meanwhile, Rock Slide is probably our primary Rock Stab, and with Ice Spinner being a great way to not only remove terrain for our other priority options such as Dragonite in the back, but it's also a great Ice Stab that doesn't miss on like Mountain Gale, which has a chance to miss. And then Earthquake finally is just a really good way around Steel types that would otherwise wall our set. Moving on to Decidueye, I've actually had a lot of faith in this Pokemon in terms of maybe being an okay special Grass type, and I think that while my faith has been a little bit diminished, I still have enough in it. With the Miracle Seed, we should be able to actually guarantee take on Dozo, even if it's a guarantee to a KO with Leaf Storm, since we'll never have to worry about our special attack dropping against this Pokemon. Meanwhile, Giga Drain, this is a great way for sustain. We have Terra Blast with Water to try and help with the Fire type matchup against mons like Torkoal, Charizard, etc. Really, whatever Fire type we're going to have to deal with in this format, whatever one comes prevalent, we'll be able to handle it. Finally, we have the Shadow Ball just as a primary Ghost Stab, and with our investment, it's actually rather intricate. We not only have the ability to guarantee take a choice specs freeze dry from bundle, but we also guarantee you can creep Tyranitar even if it's item nature, and we do kill oh, Dozo as a 2 KO. Finally, our 12 and step is honestly just remaining. I didn't really have another purpose for this, so I figured why not. Moving on to Hisui and Decidueye, however, we do have a Scopeland set with triple arrows, Leaf Blade, Knock Off, and Protect. We have a high crit rate with triple arrows as well as the 50% chance to drop Biz Death and a 30% chance to flinch, so I figured that trying to lean into this spammable option here would be valuable. So we have the high crit ratio with scope lens, making this a really near perfect crit option here, with Leaf Blade also benefiting from this too. Because knockoff is an egg move I believe for Decidueye, we do still have that, and I leaned into this with Terra Dark to try and get rid of our not only 4 times weakness to flying, but also to help get rid of our psychic weakness here, since knockoff is an incredible option to get rid of items. With the 252 speed, I wanted to keep adamant nature on Decidueye to deal as much damage as possible, but at the very least this happens to creep Hisui and Electrode, and I solely went with this because of the fact that I didn't know what else to invest for, and I didn't want to go with Jolly just to creep Tyranitar. However, with a Pokemon that's this lackluster offensively, I didn't really feel it was also going to be worthwhile to invest in bulk, so I decided to just go with this. Though if you wanted to run this Pokemon in Trick Room, you could maybe just go with the max HP set, but I think it's going to be very outclassed there by Pokemon like Iron Hands, so I wouldn't recommend that either. Moving on to Rillaboom, this is probably going to be a big turnoff due to the lack of Grassy Glide, but I think I've actually found a way to make this Pokemon kind of work. With the investment, we have 236 HP and 76 Spit F, which should be really good to not only take Specs boosted Terra Ice Iron Bundle Freeze Dries, but it also should be able to, with our investment of 124 speed and the move drum beating, be able to actually allow us to outpace Lycanroc even if it has a sand boost due to the fact that we will drop its speed as long as we partner this thing with the Tailwind option, which unlike previously stated options like Braviary for example, really Boom actually pairs really well with common Tailwind options such as Talonflame, so I do actually see this thing maybe being viable here. With the knockoff, we're able to clear opposing items, U-Turn were great at keeping momentum going, especially into common Intimidate Pokemon, and then Stomping Tantrum is a great way to handle Pokemon such as Fire types and Steel types that would otherwise wall our primary stab here. It's an okay option, and with the 68 attack, this is really just meant to try and boost our damage output a little bit, and then throw 4 into Fizz Death, just because it's remaining, but I think this one might have a little bit of merit in this format. I'm just not sure specifically how it's going to is all. Moving on to Cinderace, we have a pretty simple one. With the Choice Band Terra Fire, we're leaning into Pyro Ball spamming, which I think is probably going to be the best way to deal damage with this thing on the Sun Team. We have U-Turn as well to try and keep momentum going, with Sucker Punch and High Jump Kick being backseat options, especially with Libero now only changing it typing once per turn. I do think we may as well lean into the choice route with this Pokemon because it will do enough damage on Sun to be viable and it has really strong priority to Sucker Punch. And with the 188 speed stat thanks to our 252 Jolly investment, we will at least be able to tie Roaring Moon if it's going for a max speed attack boosting set, which is actually rather common on early metas at least. So I think it's something to keep in mind here as a kind of viable option if you're running a strong damage breaker for Sun. Moving on to Inteleon, we have a Scopeland set with Sniper, which is designed to try and boost the crit rate of Snipeshot as much as possible. We have Terra Blast Grass to try and help with matchups like Gastron, and luckily we don't really care too much about Gastron due to the fact that Snipe Shot will never be drawn into it, but it's still a matchup I would like to at least force Terra on. And meanwhile, we have Ice Beam as well, which is just a great way around different grass types. We're max investment in both our special attack and speed just to try and keep Pokemon like for example Roaring Moon, again with that same benchmark that we had previously with Cinderace to tie, we can actually just creep it out right with Inteleon. Meanwhile, the max special attack is just to deal as much damage as possible here. Moving on to our Shifu, this is a rather broken Pokemon coming back, and I do see this thing being a strong option here. With Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, Drain Punch, and Detect, this should be a really good option, as Detect is really valuable to get around random imprisoned Pokemon that would run in prison for Protect. Meanwhile, you have Wicked Blow being a strong crit boosted option, with Sucker Punch being good priority, and Drain Punch being a great way to just recover health back. 
We're max speed to tire their Shifus because there are two of them and they're both going to be really damning. And we have Terra Fire to get rid of our fairy weakness that was four times in this Pokemon, while also allowing us to avoid different burns, which is pretty cool because Pokemon like Arcanine could maybe burn us and become problematic. Moving on to our Shifu Rapid, I do think this will continue to be the better option here, just like it was last generation. And this will be a huge piece for Rain, giving a lot of competition to Palafin as a really good breaker here. With Focus Sash, we're able to just try and take whatever hit possible, and with Surging Strikes, Aqua Jet, Drain Punch, and Detect, this should just be a really strong damage boosting moveset, pretty linear to how we've ran Ushifu Single Strike. The Terra Water to boost our Water Stabs, especially since we're going to be going for Aqua Jet priority constantly, I do think this will be a pretty valuable option here, and I didn't really care about running Terra Fire because it will actually hurt us in the long run running us on Rain Team. Moving on to Regieleki, we have Electroweb, Thunderbolt, Terra Blast, and Extreme Speed. One of the worst things for Regieleki last time was the fact that it was pretty walled out by ground types. However, with Terra Blast Grass, we should be able to actually counter ground types pretty efficiently now, such as Great Tusk and Garchomp. You can also opt for Terra Ice, however, I do think a Terra Grass is a little bit more valuable here, because one of the best playstyles I do see for Lucky is on Rain, meaning you do need a way to force Gastron onto Terra. So I do think that you'll at least need to run Terra Grass, if nothing else, just to force Gastron onto a shitty Terra that you can then bully later on in the game. Overall though, this will be an incredible Pokemon, and I do recommend running Regieleki. It should be great this format, despite Iron Bundle being a great way to slow this thing down. Moving on to Regidrago, Regidrago had a huge glow up in this format, and I do think this will actually be kind of viable. I would prefer a choice spec set, truthfully because I wasn't sure what to run on it, but you do have a lot of options like Assault Vest or even Life Orb, or Dragon Dance potentially with Lumberry. I opted for choice specs though with Dragon Energy, Terra Blast Steel, Draco Meteor, and Earth Power. With Terra Blast Steel being a great way to try and clear a Fairy type before you spam Dragon Energy or Draco Meteor. Meanwhile, Earth Power is a great way to try and clear a few different Steel types that would wall you, making this thing into a pretty okay option on Tailwind. Not exactly going to be a great Pokemon, but it will definitely be better than it was last generation in my opinion. Moving on to Glass Jr, just like last generation, we do have a weakness policy set, which I think will actually be pretty viable here. With the 252 HP and the 108 Fizz Def specifically making sure that we can actually take a close combat from Max Attack Iron Hands. In Trick Room, Iron Hand should actually be slower than us, but that doesn't really matter because of the fact that all it can do is deal one single hit, and if your opponent didn't dual target you, they're essentially going to be losing their Iron Hands next turn. Whether they go for Terra and they lose to Icicle Crash, or they stay pre-Terra and they end up losing to Stomping Tantrum. Also with the Terra Blast Grass, this should be really valuable to not only avoid Spore from Amoongus, but also with our moveset, we actually handle every single Amoongus perfectly. Whether it's Icicle Crash for pre-Terra, Stomping Tantrum for Terra Fire, which while we can't necessarily kill, at the very least we can guarantee to a KO, even after weakness policy, and Terra Blast Grass should be able to Oko Terra Water builds. This should be incredibly viable here, and I do think a Glass Shiro will be an incredible option for Trick Room, making it a really established Pokemon on today's list. Moving on to Spectrier, on the other hand, I think this one might have gotten a little worse, but it still is pretty good. We have Nasty Plot with Shadow Ball, Terra Blast, Fighting, and Protect. I think it should be a pretty decent Focus Ash option, with our moveset currently creeping Masquerada, because there's not really another Pokemon worthwhile creeping, unless if you want to run max speed for other Spectrier, which is honestly pretty valid. Overall though, I chose Terra Fighting to try and help mostly with King Gambit's matchup, because King Gambit will be a pretty damning option here, and if we can even just force that thing into a Terra Flying, we could still just nuke it with Shadow Ball anyway, making it still pretty manageable. You could also throw on something like a will o -Wisp plus Hex Head over Nasty Plot plus Shadow Ball, and that will have a lot of merit too, as it helps with a lot of different Sucker Punch priority, but I think that this moveset will be still pretty valuable nonetheless. Now we're going to be moving on to our Hisuian Pokemon. From here on out, we're in uncharted territory. All of these Pokemon are going to be first timers in the VGC format, and it will be very interesting to see how they adapt. However, I think I found at least some okay at best movesets, and potentially even just game breaking ones for some of these Pokemon, and I'm hoping that you guys will at least stay along for the ride. Starting off with Weird Ear, we have a Terra Fairy moveset with Psy Shield, Bash, Trick Room, Imprison, and Protect. I opted for Imprison Protect with Trick Room, mostly just to try and stop other Trick Room options from resetting Trick Room on you, and I have Psy Shield, Bash as a really good way to try and boost your Fizz Death. With the 244 HP and the 236 spit off careful, we do actually have a really good way to not only take a choice spec sun boosted Fluttermane Moonblast, but even if Fluttermane goes for a Terra Fairy here, we can also actually take a Dazzling Gleam too. We can't necessarily guarantee to take a Terra Fairy Moonblast, however, so it's a little unfortunate, but there was no way to do that with this spread. The 20 Fizz Death is just remaining, and I didn't really need to boost our damage output here, so I threw this into Fizz Death. And with the Terra Fairy, this is really just a good defensive typing here that I opted for, similar to how you would run this on a DD. We have Clear Vore up next with the Life Orb with Sharpness. I have Stone Axe, Night Slash, Close Combat, and Protect. Since Stone Axe is actually boosted by Sharpness, so we'll still be able to get a really strong option here anyway, since Clear Vore doesn't really have a great way to actually boost Sheer Force other than something like a Rock Slide, which defeats the purpose of running the move altogether. I figured Stone Axe could actually be pretty interesting, and it does lead into the question of will this make hazards viable, or will people just go with sharpness and throw Rock Slide on anyway to still flinch their opponents and then just boost Night Slash damage solely? 
and honestly, I'm not sure. I think both Rockslide and Sonax actually have a lot of merit here, but ultimately though, Night Slash and Close Combat are going to be really good heavy hitters for this set. I opted for Terra Rock just to boost your Sonax damage, but you could also go with something like a Terra Dark or a Terra Fighting to try and get a lot of damage out of those options as well. We're max speed to try and take advantage of Tailwind here, and that's really about it for Cleavor. Moving on to Ursaluna, we do have a Flame Warp with Guts, with Facade, Headlong Rush, Rockslide, and Protect. Now you might be wondering why I didn't lean into the offensive Terra option with something like a Ground, Rock, or normal, and that's because of the fact that I opted for Terra Water. Now Terra Water is mostly here to try and take on Torgal hits, specifically because of the fact that Terra Rock would still be fearing stuff like Earth Power, and it also deals with a lot of lower tier fightings that would still be keeping that fighting weakness, with Pokemon such as Iron Hand speed tying us, and that's not really something I wanted to take here. So I opted for Terra Water, because it gets rid of our fighting weakness, and it also makes sure that we can actually take a Torkoal Eruption, because otherwise that could have actually Oko'd us, believe it or not, which is kind of insane because this thing is really hard to KO. Uh, I still do think that honestly without an offensive Terra, this Mon will be a nightmare offensively because after a single Guts boost, you're able to Oko most Pokemon with one of Headlong Rush, Facade, or Rock Slide, if not at least roll the Oko on them or make them pretty near KO to begin with. Next up, Basket Legion. Now Basket Legion will be absolutely fucking broken in singles, but I think in doubles this will still be a lot of fun to use. This will be a great swim option for Rain, and it's one that I think Rain can actually finally really lean into to just try and late game sweep, because Basket Legion is still a really threatening Pokemon. Personally, I think Adaptability is a really incredible ability on this Pokemon, but I did lean for the Swift Swim set, mostly just to try and take advantage of your speed here. With Last Respects, Wave Crash, Aqua Jet, and Protect with the Spell Tag, this is leaning into trying to make Last Respects our primary damage option here, and with the 228 speed Jolly, we're actually going to be able to creep Timid Max Speed Alecky, which is pretty valuable here. Overall, I think this Pokemon will be pretty strong nonetheless, and it will be an amazing way to make Pelipper finally viable again, but we do still have the special variant Basque Legion Female, which I opted for a choice spec set here with Hydro Pump, Surf, Ice Beam, and Chowder Ball. I kind of wish this thing got Muddy Water, but it is what it is, I still kept the spread Surf just in case you need it, but Hydro Pump will probably be your main primary water stat here. We have Terra Water yet again to try and boost the water damage that we're going to be already boosting with Rain anyway. And we do keep the same speed creep for Regieleki here because of the fact this is also running Swift Swim. I think the Basket Legion can also run adaptability on this moveset as well, but again, I do think that Swift Swim is slightly more reliable here, and you would probably need a whole different moveset investment to begin with if you were running adaptability. Moving on to Sneasler, we do have the Unburden set with Psychic Seed. We have Close Combat, Dire Claw, Night Slash, and Fake Out. And the Psychic Seed with Fake Out is mostly just here to try and give options for both with and without the Unburdened popping. For example, if I don't really want to run my Ndidi in a given matchup on a lead or even just at all, I still have a really good Fake Out Mon out of Sneasler that has 120 speed and is really incredible. But if I want to partner this with Ndidi though, I have options like Night Slash, Dire Claw, and Close Combat that are all really powerful on a Pokemon with 130 attack. And not only this, but we do have a really strong way of making sure that this is a really unrivaled Pokemon speed-wise. With the Terra Dark, we're also able to boost our Night Slash damage while making sure that we're also able to get rid of our four types weakness to Psychic here, which is important if we're going to run this thing on a Psychic Train team, making this a really good damage option for any team to use. Next up, we have Overquill. Now, I do think a Hisui and Quillvish will be slightly better on the defensive end, and while Overquill can technically run those sets, I opted instead to run a more offensive set here. Now, the item choice can be either one, the Assault Vest, which I ran here, or even something like a Mystic Water, uh, or a Poison Barb, or any of those other damage boosting items. You can go with Choice Band, Life Orb, etc. But I opted for Assault Vest here to try and get your special defense boosted a little bit. We have the Speed Creep, again, for Reggie Lucky with the Rain Boost up, so I figured this was pretty valuable here, and with the 84 investment, this is just remaining leftover investment. We're max attack just to try and deal as much damage as possible, and we went with Terra Water to try and at least give this thing essentially a third stab thanks to the Rain, making this a pretty incredible option. Barbarage as well is a really strong spamble move too, but I didn't really want to go with Terra Poison here because it's a much shittier typing than Terra Water would ever be. Going into Enamorus, we do have first our incarnate form. Now this one actually can take advantage of superpower very well, and I'm really glad that this one at least managed to keep it. We have superpower, player off Terra Blast, Fire, and Protect, with the contrary ability and Life Orb. Now this will benefit a lot off of spamming superpower to try and boost your physical defense and attack, with the ability to also take advantage of a lot of common intimidate threats such as Arcanine, Lander Asterion, and Salamence. This might be the first genuinely meta-defining and contrary Pokemon we've ever had, and I think as far as VGC goes, this will truly set the standard going forward. We have max speed just to tie other and Anamorous, because I do think it's actually going to be a very powerful speed creep to go with, though if you want to try and run a special Anamorous, it will still be fairly viable with something like a Moonblast, Mystical Fire, Earth Power, and Protect set, and then instead going for the Life Orb with the Cute Charm ability, which should be valuable here. Though you can also even go with something like a Springtide Storm on a special set and then still keep Contrary anyway, because I believe that Contrary only matters for 
stats that come on your side, not for the opponents. But I would definitely make sure I double check that before I actually trust my word. I am only someone pre-meta speculating here. Moving on to our final Hisuian Pokemon, we do have Enomaurus Therian form. Now this is a Terra ground set, mostly just designed to try and get rid of your weakness to not only Rock Slide, but also to try and just deal as much damage as possible here. With the 252 HP and the 28 Spadef, we're able to, with the Assault Vest, guarantee take even a Choice Specs Terra Ice Boosted Iron Bundle Freeze Dry, which is pretty incredible here. Meanwhile, we have options like Springside Storm, Draining Kiss, Earth Power, and Mystical Fire, which are all really strong damage dealers here. And specifically, if you are looking to try and take on that Iron Bundle moveset, if it does go for Terra Ice, you can actually guarantee kill it with Mystical Fire, or if not, at least drop a special attack, which should be valuable because without Terra Ice Freeze Dry, it cannot actually go for the KO on you. And it's actually fairly underwhelming damage, especially after the minus one, which this damage roll ends up actually going down all the way to a mes It's a guaranteed three KO, actually. It does 34%, which means you can actually potentially even take this hit pre-Terra, if it's going for just two freeze dries, guaranteed. Now we have two more Pokemon, and while these aren't necessarily home transfers, I'm including them anyway, because I assume they're gonna be allowed in the same batch. If they aren't, whatever. Start off with Walking Wake here. With the speed boosting set, we have 252 speed and 244 special attack, with the 12 remaining just thrown into our defenses and HP with four in all of those stats. We have the Terra Fire set, which is designed to try and get rid of our weakness to freeze dry, while still then taking advantage of the fact that thanks to the sun, we will be able to drop a little bit of our weakness to water here. And it essentially gives us a third stab, with Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse, and Hydra Steam all being incredible options. Especially since Hydra Steam will get stronger in the sun instead of getting weaker, this is actually a really terrifying sun option. And I covered this all in my video on weather that I did last week, so make sure you check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about what Walking Wake might do in the future for sun. Finally, we have Iron Leaves, and I think Iron Leaves will actually be kind of interesting. This will be a cool tail one option with the moves Scythe Blade, Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, and Protect all being valuable here. We're just max speed, max attack just to try and deal as much damage as fast as possible with the Scope Lens taking advantage of the Leaf Blade critical hit ratio, though something like a Life Orb could still be good here. We have Terra Fighting to try and boost the Sacred Sword damage as well as get rid of our weakness to pretty much everything thanks to this terrible typing. So hopefully that helps a lot. And hopefully you guys have found some sort of moveset that you will enjoy using from all of these Pokemon. If you did and you wanna see some more content like this, of course, like and subscribe. We're actually gonna be doing a showcase with the best of three. I'm not sure against who yet, but we're gonna be figuring that out. And I'm gonna be trying to showcase some of these new Pokemon. So make sure you guys stay tuned for this. Shoutouts to Kurt as well, who edited this behemoth of a video. I know it was not easy, Kurt. Uh, so thank you very much for undertaking this. I really appreciate it. And also shout out to our channel members being Josh Get Ultra Player, Mia, Zig Zero, Bebat, Ana Zapur, Timo Mueller, Fonzi, Ben Bambi, Rao Plays, Oba, and Johannes B. If you guys want to join the channel membership, it's only a couple dollars a month and you get some bonus content such as the laddering to Master Ball, which we're doing with our clone Pokemon team that should be going up on the weekend. With that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out, guys.